of religions. Today we are talking about the firmzilla all rounder and in particular how to pressure ferment with it and stop it from leaking CO2. Um, the reason these are such a good unit is you can pressure ferment with them, they can also be used as a uni tank, you can serve from them and you can also pressure transfer. But if you're leaking CO2 the whole time uh, you can waste CO2 plus the pressure fermentation part of it doesn't actually work. So. Uh, let's kick into gear, I'll show you some simple steps of how to stop it from leaking. So here laid out in front of us is everything that you require to pressurise the unit. Obviously you've got the collar that comes with it from standard, so does the lid. The lid doesn't come with the CO2 caps. Um, these can be easily purchased from any local brew store. I've got Keyland plastic ones and they work perfectly. Uh, one point of leakage is where the CO2 caps actually screw on to the lid itself. So the first step I'm going to do is wrap some thread tape around these two outlet points. So now you can see what I've done is I've wrapped the two outlet ports in thread tape on the cap. What that does is it creates an extra tight seal between the outlet ports and the carbonation caps. What is thread tape, some of you might ask, it's this stuff. Um, you can purchase it from any hardware store. What it's actually mostly used for is plumbers use it to seal up plumbing um, joints because otherwise water will leak out of it. Just like CO2 will leak out of this fitting. So what I'm going to do now is tighten these onto the lid. Um, I'm not going to over tighten them though because nothing on this unit likes to be over tightened and especially plastic. Um, fittings. So I'm going to wind them up and we'll see how we go. So basically I'm just doing it tight enough so it's what you'd probably call just a bit more than finger tight. Uh, you don't want to do any more than that. It will seal off properly from then on in. Alrighty, so we're back at our fermenter now. Our secret weapon in all of this is a food grade lubricant. Yeah, what you need to do is, there's an o-ring around the lid, you need to spray that so the whole o-ring is covered with lubricant. You can get this in a tube if you want to wipe it on. Doesn't matter what you use as long as it's food grade. Next step, you put your lid on. Now, what I also do, which is a bit of a pro tip, I spray the lid of the, the collar, sorry, of the firmzilla. This makes it just a bit easier to undo when I need to. Now the next tip, and this is also just as important as the thread tape, just as important as the lubricant. When you're tightening it up, you don't go much, so it's tightening up. When you're tightening it up, you don't go much tighter than just over finger tight. If you tighten it up too much, so that's about where I'm going to leave it, if you tighten it up too much, what that actually does, it will warp the o-ring on the inside of the lid and you'll lose your seal entirely. So yeah, don't tighten up your lid too much, That you, I can't stress that too much. Now I'm doing a brew with the G40 at the moment, so what I'll do is we will ramp up to boil, then I will transfer the wort into the fermenter and we'll come back to it, we'll show you how it all set up full of ready to ferment, not quite beer. Right, so I finally pumped the wort into the two firmzillas. I've got my firmzilla all rounder and the one with the annoying valve and the bowl on the bottom. Um, if I could say anything about these two units, buy the firmzilla all rounder because the one with the valve on the bottom is a real pain in the butt. Um, so I have sealed them all up, I've lubed up all the seals and we're ready to rock and roll. So the two fermenters have been sitting in the temperature controlled fridges for about 18 hours now. There's two different styles of yeast going on here, that's why the fermentation process is different between the two of them. The one on the left is the Nottingham high performance yeast and it's gone crazy, um, but as you can see it's holding pressure quite comfortably. The gas noise you can hear is actually coming out of the spunding valve. Um, this one here is just only just starting to kick in, but both of the 